The next biggest set of problems that you might run into on the theming layer have to do with CSS. CSS or cascading style sheets are responsible for the visual output of the page. It has to do with the positioning of items, so for example the columns that you see on a three column layout are all positioned with CSS. And then it also has to do with the look and feel, for example the background colors to most items, the color of the text, the size of the text, the padding, and the margins that are used for the different elements. And so if you see any problems related to anything that has to do with positioning or the look and feel, then it's likely a CSS problem. The first thing you can do is to disable CSS aggregation on your site. The role of CSS aggregation is to condense all of the CSS files into a single file, which makes it quicker to download. But what happens then is that any changes you make to the CSS files aren't registered and they don't get added into that aggregated file. So in order to do testing and to do active changes to that CSS file or to any CSS file, we should have CSS aggregation turned off. To do that, go ahead and go to Configuration, Development, and Performance. This is the same page that we use to clear our caches. Go ahead and scroll down, and you see under this Bandwidth Optimization section, we have the option to aggregate and compress CSS files. We just need to make sure that that's unchecked, and then click Save Configuration. One way we can tell if CSS aggregation is turned on is by looking at the source code to our page. I clicked Control u in order to view the source page of this in Firefox, but there's also a menu item you can use. At the very top, you'll see a list of the CSS files being used. For example, here's systemmenus.css. You see a number of items here, whereas if we had CSS aggregation turned on, we would only see one or two CSS files being imported. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. The other potential problem with CSS is that the changes that you make are being overridden by other CSS definitions. I'm going to go ahead and jump back to the home page here so we can look at a view of nodes. And what I've done is installed a extension to Firefox called Firebug. Firebug is tremendously useful when it comes to troubleshooting CSS issues. You can do things like identify what files are responsible for what CSS properties of any element on the page, you can modify those in line to see if the changes that you might make to the file can be applied without having to go and change it in the file, save it, and reload the page. And a ton of other things. Firebug is tremendously useful, and we'll cover some of the potentialities of Firebug in future videos. Once it's installed, you'll see a little bug symbol in the lower bar on the browser. And if you click this, it will pop up a dialog box that includes various pieces of information. Right now we have the HTML tab highlighted and we can hover over any item here in order to see it highlighted on the page. So you see that there's the top menu bar highlighted when I hover over this admin menu div right here. If I click on it, I can see the CSS styles being applied to this particular element by looking at the right hand side of this dialog under the style tab and you see there's some styles being applied to the admin menu ID and we can scroll down and see all of the styles that are being applied. I'm going to go ahead and select an item by clicking this click to select an element on the page to inspect it and then I'm going to go ahead and click this paragraph. What I wanted to demonstrate here was what it looks like when a style is being overridden by another style. So you might know that the styles that you've added to your CSS file will have a particular effect on your output, but that might be overridden by some other style that's in another CSS file that's more specific or maybe just appears after your definition. So let's take a look at the styles over here for this particular element. I'm going to scroll down a bit. And you see here that we have a crossed out definition here. This means that this is being overridden by something else. And if you scroll up just a little bit, you'll see where. It's right here. Both of these occur in the style.css file. But this one right here appears in line 589. And this one appears in line 586, which means that this one shows up after 
which means because of the nature of cascading style sheets, cascading meaning that later definitions will be used, that this gets used as a result of that later definition. One other element that might come into play with this is that the actual selector, in this case it's selecting the node-teaser class, and then inside of that looking for another item that has the .content class, that this may be more specific than this class which is .node, and looking for a class of content inside of that node element. By being able to view a list of the styles that are applying to a particular element, we can do some testing to see what's going on. For example, one potential problem is that we haven't used the right selector in order to apply a particular style to an element. If so, then we won't see that style listed on this right-hand box. If it is being listed and it's being crossed out, then we have a couple of options for getting it applied. One thing we can do is add the important tag, which is a exclamation mark plus the word important at the end of a definition, and this will force it to be applied to any particular element. Now this is kind of a last resort type thing, but it'll help you figure out if, it's, if that particular definition is in the right place, if it would apply. And then you can remove the important tag and then reposition your style elsewhere on the style sheet in order to get it to apply. If you're not seeing your style in this right hand box and you've checked to make sure that the selector is right, then it's possible that the style sheet that you're using isn't being included on this particular page. And you can view the source code, for example in Firefox by hitting Control U, and looking for it in this top portion here to see if you see it. You can also do a search if you're looking for a particular style. So I hit Control F and I can do style.css and that highlights the particular item here if I'm looking for it. So if you don't see it here then you know you need to add that CSS file explicitly in the themes.info file and if you've already done that then make sure that the cache has been cleared so that any items that you've added to the .info file get pulled in 